Kate, thank you everyone for coming. This is going to be our first live demo of the Recon Village, and hopefully everything will work. Uh, we've got everything on the screen, and hopefully everything here is going to log in. Uh, so when you tap the beginning of any internal network, intelligence is just absolutely key. If you have a lot of great intelligence moving into the environment, you can either not get the right assessments on the target, or you can entirely miss targets. Uh, William Southers here is actually the author of Prevalent Map, which he's going to walk through in a live demo right now. Uh, what this tool does is a complete intelligence gathering tool. It is 100% passive, and I will now hand over to William for a talk. All right, uh, going to talk with Mike. Can you hear me? How you all doing today? Good? All right, so uh, this is Provalco. Again, it's 100% passive free engagement post compromise tool. Um, I'm just going to quickly run through these here. Uh, so, real quick, we're just going to cover an agenda. I'm going to provide a brief introduction. I'm going to discuss uh, some, some of the problems with modern day engagements, and it's probably nothing new to a lot of you. Also, going to uh, propose a solution, which I believe is uh, enumeration and validation through through free engagement, passive recon. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about operating like an engine within the network, and that's going to involve a couple different things. I uh, first need to switch your perspective on networking a little bit, uh, and we'll you know, talk about a couple other things in the course. Uh, give you some uh, different demos of Prevalco. <laughs> this demo, one of the demos I'm going to give you is, uh, it works about 100% uh, of the time, 70% of the time, so we'll see how it works. Then after that, we're going to kind of transition to a phase, talk about where Prevalco might fit within your engagements, uh, the future of Prevalco, uh, some closing remarks, and uh, I'll give you a chance for uh, some questions, comments, and concerns. Uh, that said, Really quick, uh, required slide. Uh, my name's William. I'm a hacker husband, young, uh, young father, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm also a senior security consultant for Fire Labs. And I've got a lot of years of industry targeting all kinds of various organizations through red team and testing. Um, basically, I like to hack all the tools. So that's enough about me, though. Uh, Let's talk about why I'm here. I'm here to actually convey the real value of internal reconnaissance. I think that's something that uh, uh, or or industry as a whole has, has really dropped the ball on. I'm also here to foster an environment of divergent thinking. I think as hackers, we're subject to group think like everyone else, or we come off like we're not. I'm here to challenge your assumptions about what you think you know about internal network reconnaissance. I'm here to solicit some input from the hacker community. I'm here to scare the hell out of some uh, network companies, which may or may not know that this is an issue. I bet you a lot of them do. They don't talk about it as much. I also want to start a conversation with uh, network engineers and compliance bodies. And then lastly, on the forum building. OK, so quick disclaimer. Um, I'm not a real ninja, and uh, just do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the, the, the problem of uh, modern day patients, right? And again, I'm probably speaking to a lot of you where you guys are already uh, tracking this, but there's a lot of engagement overhead, there's delays, things like that. Uh, we're operating uh, with short timelines, we're often targeting you know, these secure environments. Uh, we're inserted into an environment we actually know very little about. Some of the expectations that are put on us to uh, discover that uh, may lead to using uh, various things. Uh, also, there's new products that are designed to inject false intelligence about the environment uh, that we're targeting. And actually, this works with what I call compliance, or the scam of compliance. Uh, the fact is, sometimes the engagement with compliance is just a scam. They're just looking to check the box. Uh, and often, customers don't understand the environments uh, that, they, that they actually maintain, but they define the scope. Thanks a lot, PCI, Ethernet, let's see. You know, but we already know this, right? We know this is happening. The truth is, you know, we understand terminology 101, which is the law does not apply to me, and your scope does not apply to me. Scope is not a defense mechanism, and you've got to stop treating it like it is, because a real world adversary doesn't care about scope. But we know that scope's going to be a limiting factor, and we, we also know that uh, you know, attacks can come from anywhere, but we know that that scope is potentially going to impact what's supposed to simulate a real world engagement. There's also a severe lack of this understanding on the blue team side, and that's primarily or false. Uh, those that are serving uh, the blue team haven't really effectively communicated that. But we also lack 
a set of tools to be able to uh, provide evidence of why maybe the scope should expand or how it should go, uh, how, should, how the engagement should be adjusted. So again, my proposed solution is enumeration validation through that pre-engagement passive or promise. Uh, this provides a lot of uh, various things. I think uh, the number one uh, thing that it provides that's most important is a fingerprint of the environment before you touch it. Um, uh, that, that gives you kind of a baseline to reflect upon when something changes. Uh, it kind of gives you a good uh, baseline to, uh, to validate scope and the intent of the engagement because it's a scam. Uh, it kind of allows you to uh, uh, potentially create opportunities for exploitation uh, for things that the customer may not know about. And if they don't know about it, they can't, you know, they can't defend it and it makes it for uh, real easy targets. And also allows us just to inform the customer about their real threat landscape. Because the fact is, defenders are defending environments where users are making changes that they're not attracting. So I know what you're thinking, well that's great, how are we going to do that passively? And I'm glad you asked. So let's just talk about uh, leveraging the environment against itself for some targeted exploitation. And again, I have to switch your perspective on that to uh, have some conversations. Wow. So, there's a lot of things that I'm sure a lot of people here know about Ethernet switches, right? There's uh, switches in just about every environment. Typically, uh, you know, uh, they're near the topology. Uh, uh, but the fact is, people make a lot of poor assumptions about their switches. They're actually quite insecure by default. They buy all these security features, uh, but they're just not running. Uh, and the fact is, they're just tremendously powerful if they're compromised by an adversary. Well, let's talk about what you may not know about Ethernet. Technically, they're defined as Ethernet bridges with some sort of Mac filtering database uh, and uh, queuing engine uh, in the background. So, because this Mac filtering database, every, everyone assumes that these things are uh, safe because this Mac filtering database, the data can't cross uh, between them. But it's just not true. The fact is that switches are just like every other component in the network. They have hardware and software limitations, and the fact is uh, that they can't be impacted. Um, uh, for various reasons, either because they're misconfigured, unconfigured, or they're just flat out overwhelmed. So that's why, you know, I believe switches are snitches. <laughs> In fact, there's more intellectually close to a switch that, that is potentially easily accessible just through passive reconnaissance. Uh, just give you a couple different things. Uh, network topologies and trust relationships. Uh, uh, how is the network designed? Who's allowed to talk with who? Very useful if it's behind a firewall. Uh, how, how can I, where's my jump post to be able to reach my uh, target environment? Uh, network service info, uh, you know, what kind of network services are running out there? Authentication information actually uh, gets spilled on switches. <clears throat> network host intent, is it a DMT server, is it a dual home server, is it a workstation, things like that. So for example, I might not know what 1sec2awg3p is, that doesn't mean jack diddly, but I switch the switch that I'm connected to may actually tell me that this is the advanced warfare group password reset server. And suddenly, that's very useful intelligence. You can also uh, provide information about uh, network egress policies, which is great for seeing stuff from the environment. Best way to flow is the flow like the network. Uh, it can uh, give us uh, information about managed service providers uh, or previous compromises that we can leverage to uh, uh, potentially uh, get our hooks deeper into the environment. And most importantly, you can tell us about supported protocols and open TCP and UDP ports. I call this reverse port standard. Because the fact is that switches are still in the unit as traffic. So when I drop this, I got a lot of uh, really interesting uh, fact, uh, comments from the uh, community. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of trust that we put in unicast traffic. But you know, don't take my word for it. I'm just going to provide you a couple of uh, examples. Sorry for the terrible screenshot. You know, but uh, this is a standard, you know, Wireshark, everyone's seen this, and we see some internal hosts that are talking to Amazon, and uh, we're able to spot some uh, TCP ports and UDP ports, it's just a simple packet capture, a lot of people are aware of that. Uh, here's something, I didn't write this, DSIF is uh, still a great tool. This is not any man in the middle tax or anything like this, it's just running past in the background, and we're getting, um, getting SDP uh, V1 uh, uh, authentication, right? Uh, this port here is a broadcast protocol mining. Uh, but 
you know, uh, fire concerning in, in, in the environment gives me a clear text uh, password. And okay, well, uh, what can we do with that? There's a lot of things we can do with the switch. The fact is that people reuse passwords everywhere. So this was uh, quite interesting for me uh, in real world engagement. But let's dive just a little bit deeper. So uh, on the right there is the stuff that uh, Cisco has been telling you that you can't read. Um, but uh, I'm not so concerned about that. I'm more concerned about the metadata on the left. And what we have, we have two different hosts uh, that are talking. Uh, to a host on TCP port 8888. And this is uh, the TCP push traffic, or, well, this is TCP push traffic, but there's also, you know, SIDS and that, and, you know, some of those pieces. But what this tells me, I know that there's a service on TCP port 8888. Now, we're probably thinking enterprise proxy or anything along those lines. And, you know, that, that would probably be right, but I'm able to acquire that passively without sending a single thing. Let's dive a little bit deeper. Yeah, no man in the middle uh, tactics are in there. Just use the big up in the environment, and I get something uh, going through a printer. And you know, like, so what? It's a printer document. No, in, in this, this particular case, it's a Windows Server 2003 R2 host with a username. And you're like, well, okay, so it's an administrator. Everyone knows that. Now, what I have here is administrators are logging on to servers that are unpatched and unsupported, and they're printing PDFs. It tells me a hell of a lot about the environment. That I'm, that I'm targeting, about the security posture and such. <laughs> so, you know, depending on where you are uh, on the stance, if you're a defender, this might be your response. You didn't think that uh, that was still uh, the switches before. And if you're like me and haven't taken advantage of this a whole lot, I'm just thinking that, oh my gosh, some stuff I'm missing, that's my day every day. <laughs> and then, of course, if you're selling this stuff to people, it might be eye opening to uh, uh, what's felt. So, so that's great. So let's just talk about my methodology that I used to use. Uh, this is about an hour and a half talk. I'm going to give it to you in about 30 seconds uh, to, to gather this. But uh, I'm a big believer in uh, passive reconnaissance, semi passive reconnaissance. And so I would run through uh, various phases, starting with OSINs. And if you're not doing OSINs for internal pen tests, you're wrong. But that's OK. I mean, it just makes it easier for me when I don't know. You know, and that's going around and asking the internet what we know about the environment. You've got you know, uh, self-awareness is just what the network told you about yourself and the network. You've got the passive recon without transmission, taking a look at those PCAPs and things like that. You've got the semi-passive or semi-aggressive, uh, uh, semi-passive uh, interactions where you're abusing maybe RDP or something like that. And I can trigger a lot of arms. But in this particular case, RDP to a DNS server, which was handed to me through PACP, gives me not only, not only the domain admin's name, because he's logged in, because most, most people in the DNS log in from uh, But it also gives me the workstation that I'm logging in from to very useful things by simple launching just simple RDP uh, session. Uh, moving along, there's all sorts of forms of things. Then there's interactions within you know, the environment uh, via SMB, DNS, you know, whatever else have you. Uh, just working to map out that intelligence to find those targets of interest. Anyone sitting on the base? Okay. <laughs> Then there's aggressive scanning. I'd argue that most of the industry actually starts with this, which is a damn shame, because there's so much information that's available. You know, and of course, there's common all the things, right? That's what we like to do. So, depending on what your methodology is and such, you might be thinking, you know, this is rather complex. You know, I, I completely agree with you. I actually work with the same kinds of people, good people, the prospects, but you know, we're, we're coming to time, we're losing time on this, we need to recover. You know, so, uh, what, what can we do to actually uh, recover that and gather some information? So let's talk about development. This is the artifact without fighting. This is something that I rage coded when someone told me that it's impossible. Uh, and it's just a 100% passive tool uh, designed to gather as much information about your environment, possibly before an engagement starts. Uh, you know, if you're sitting there with engagement delays and things like that, sniffing out these little spills and gathering you a, a good fingerprint of the environment, potentially even authentication information. Uh, it's about 15% complete. Uh, it's working on quite a bit of it, but uh, it's fairly effective uh, in some of the engagements that we're carrying out. Of course, it requires admin privileges. OK, so let's just do a developer demonstration. Before that, I just want to say, when I took this out to my community and various people, they really didn't believe what I was talking about until they started seeing some of the results I got. Naturally, this led to some panic uh, on the blue side about whether this is fair or not. And of course, at this point, I'm like, yeah, let's take this to the world. Let's use some of the data samples I have. And management was 100% supportive in me hauling all that over here. Actually, they they were not. Uh, my management's cool, but you know they got to manage risk and 
trying to figure out how to do that. So uh, what I have here for you initially uh, is a, uh, a highly obfuscated sample with some real world data and a lot of OSINT data, data from OSINT sources, so that nobody gets burned here. So let's just talk about what we have here. So in the left hand window here, you're going to see me listing my IP and then I'm using TCP now, which is possible for whether or not I'm broadcasting. And then in the bigger window here, you're going to see me launching for Bellico here. Now, I'm just going to be constant uh, around for uh, intelligence. So there I found a, a network source uh, uh, just through passive intelligence. So that's something that might be useful for following up. Oh, here I've got an HSRP password. That's set in clear text. That's useful. And again, note that window in the, in the background. Nothing is scrolling because I'm not broadcasting anything. I'm just sitting there in passive mode and this intelligence is full through. I'm getting network egress information. There's a UDP port that's not Oh, it's a gateway, so what? But yes, that was gathered passively. Scroll along here. <laughs> Some TCP ports that were identified. Oh, this is useful. So one sec, one apple. I don't know what the heck that is, but a rapid set of next post console might be useful for using the scan information stored on there and not deleted, right? Especially if it's a hardened environment. But uh, some hosts that are identified through ICMP. Uh, here we got a password reset server where my customer he said, that's unfair and I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to target everything because the adversary will, right? Um, you know, so so that's, that's, that's fairly useful, right? Uh, and again, this is just 100% passive. Uh, if I was broadcasting anything, TCP out would be scrolling, right? And that would be scrolling, things like that. But it's not. Oh, there's someone spraying the network for SMP, which might be useful for replaying somewhere else. Here's something where I would never gather that through brute force, but in a real world engagement, two factor, uh, uh, four switch and routers. Uh, but something like that came across and instant homage before I started the engagement. Very useful. And something that they didn't know about, but it was rather strong, right? So, I just want to give you an example. Test backup servers. Love test backup servers. I'm a huge fan of alternate client resource. Uh, but yeah, that, that just kind of gives you a, a good idea of, of what Pagalto is and what it, what it looks like with uh, the environment that you know, I can provide you initially. All right, so moving along, I originally dropped this at HushCon, got a lot of uh, various uh, uh, good feedback, and some people were like, that's impossible, because they fail to understand those switches. And to be honest with you, in this, the, the, this behavior changes per environment. Half the time I feel like I'm Spartan, and the other half the time I feel like a drunken baby on a beach, you know? Because I've seen some intel that's very useful, things that I can't tell you about yet before we talk with some of the big players. But uh, point B is uh, that it, it seemed to change the kind of intel that I would get, no. but very critical. If you think about it with the OSI layer model, if, you're, if your layer 2 is not secure, so I'm going to try to give you a, a developer demonstration of some hardware here. Uh, and uh, what I have here is I've got a Cisco Switch, Max's favorite brand, you know, pretty trustworthy. And uh, it's been powered up for a while here, uh, so the CAM table and everything should be fully populated. And then in this stupid stack here, I've got uh, uh, various different pieces of activity. I've got uh, devices reaching out over SNP, I've got uh, devices uh, uh, that are SSHing each other, maybe with top, I'm trying to generate a lot of TCP push traffic and some of those pieces, right? So. Here we go. 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 Alright, 
so uh, what I have here is I've got a I've got a cascaded router. I mean, it looks like it's already picked up some traffic, right? Um, so we need some traffic. Uh, so we picked up the uh, IP space that's available there, and then we've also uh, noted uh, the good old tools available. Fine, so that's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to try to do is we're going to try to push just a little bit more traffic, and we'll try to push uh, 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 an overwhelmed uh, uh, network where uh, we're passing a little bit more uh, packets and maybe some backups or whatever else have here. And we'll see if I can just still push my network. I apologize for those of you see. So we got these devices connected to this wireless router, which makes it work out just a bit of here, which is being cascaded into a Netgear ProSafe switch, uh, which is a pretty, which is a fairly decent brand, which is cascaded into this uh, stupid uh, uh, Netgear switch, which was then cascaded into a VM running uh, on this host. And something came out that was interesting. It told me about this host, 10.63, Port 86. Yeah, I'm like, well, what the heck is that? I'm doing an OUI lookup and it says that it's a row 2. I'm like, okay, well, PS, it's wrong. Because there's no way I'm going to get wireless traffic through this cascading switch that I'm not even part of. But sure enough, if you see at the bottom on Netcat, I'm able to access that service. That's nuts, man. But it just doesn't go there. Last night I was associated with the network in the Vegas area just for the hell of it. Uh, and I found this uh, this wonderful environment that had this net there infrastructure and, and uh, found this uh, hosting description and oh so what you got a hosting description what do you do with that well it turns out Google is very helpful and it's got several high high vulnerabilities to include uh, host authentication command injection now that's one hell of a wireless assessment right how many of you guys are looking for wireless repeaters with command injection to establish persistence in your wireless and search. I didn't know about this. The developers just like, hey, found this host name. Might want to look into it. That's very useful intelligence. So what cost is this, right? Well, there's a, there's a lot of things that do that, that I do know for a fact cause this. So this is a little bit to the top three. I know that without a doubt. Uh, but the environment just really comes from being overwhelmed. Uh, asynchronous routing, where traffic's flowing from both sides, or actually at least from different VLANs, so if it spills. And get collected uh, interesting information from that. Uh, SCP to topology changes. There's a TC impact that actually goes out. What it does is it shorts the, the, the time that uh, something remains on the CAN table. And when that gets short, 
The switch doesn't know about a packet that comes through. What does the switch do when it finds a frame that it doesn't have a MAC associated with it? And it's can tables that anybody know? <clears throat> it goes out all the ports. And that's how I'm sniffing that. Uh, there's also some interesting things about SDP, and uh, by default, uh, this is my director pointed this out. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't configure SDP, so the group is usually 32768, right? So by default, if everyone's 32768, who's the root switch that sends out these SDP TCM notices? Well, the answer is the, the device with the lowest MAC address. So if you guys don't configure that, I can potentially just throw, uh, change my MAC address to A or dead beef or whatever, right? And suddenly I'm in control. That's a bit risky, right? Because you're going to cost some bandwidth and things like that. And mind you, Provoke is 100% passive. So I don't know if I'll even get to there. But I do know that when people are messing around with their infrastructure while I'm connected, that's what it's actually going to cause an impact to the CAN table, which is going to cause spilled information to me, such as your passwords. <clears throat> uh, there's also an issue with uh, uh, non compliant switches. If you look at uh, some of those uh, guys on Cisco forms, the one thing they'll say do not plug in a switch that doesn't speak SPT or respect SPT. On the argument as well, you know, a lot of devices, you know, they do speak SDP or you know, even some of the cheaper devices they're starting to roll that in. But what prevents me from throwing that filter on those packets that uh, SDP uses to manage the devices and just say, I don't know. It's only going to impact uh, the spending tree protocol, which is originally designed to prevent you know, loops and such. There's some other things, obviously, everyone knows about uh, uh, flooding switch, coming out switch, and things like that. But the fact is, I shouldn't be getting that information, or we think that we shouldn't be getting that information, but again, switches are just like any other device. They're a limited resource. And Cisco will even tell you about this. <laughs> so there you have it. Okay, so we're going to try to do a, a live developer or PCAP demonstration. So imagine an environment where they're like, you know what, uh, uh, we, we don't know how to scope this and things like that, you know, can you help us or whatever else have you. Uh, this was a feature request that somebody put in uh, with Develico, so I said, yeah, sure, why not? So, uh, hero versus goat theory here. Did that break? I can't see. Okay, so uh, again, we have a packet dump that I just downloaded from the internet last night. I really don't know much about this. <laughs> this is just going in, it's processing this data. And uh, I think I skipped uh, the original demo that I had, but uh, Provelco actually has a back end database and has the capability uh, to report on data, so it can actually give you a sit rep, uh, dash dash report, uh, just gives a high level summary, talks about credentials it's found, networks it's, it's found, hosts it's found, uh, map TCP and UDP ports and some of those pieces, right? Uh, because this tool is useless if it doesn't you know, provide useful intel. Now I used to just sit there with screen and do reverse searches, but you know, the community's like, dude, give us a database, what the heck? So anyway, uh, what this is doing is this is just helping somebody out that doesn't know how to scope an environment they're trying to defend. Who's talking to my environment? Or maybe someone who's looking for an IOC, the indicator of compromise or something, where the environment's talking to this information that it shouldn't be because uh, some advanced adversary has, you know, uh, compromised my tools and it's telling them to lie to me, right? So that's kind of how that works. So I'll see if I can uh, put them on there. It's so hard to see that font. So I did a basic report right here. Uh, Provelco came back and told me, you know, oh, uh, you know, we found we found some interesting uh, things about this. We found uh, there's like uh, uh, some interesting uh, uh, hosts that have been identified, some networks, and things like that, right? <coughs> So hard to read. Um, There's uh, the network that uh, Provelco has picked up. I can't, I can't even see the screen to change the font for me, so I apologize. Uh, 
Constitution and Madison Post, and my mom's really good look at the star represents, you know, uh, some sort of uh, stylish intel or intelligence on it. Eventually, I want to build that to you and I see. But anyway, that's the that's the TCAP demonstration. So let's just talk about the developers' role in your engagement. So, so what should we do to be doing about this? My answer is exploit it. We should be exploiting this in red teams and gen tests on a regular basis. Uh, this is uh, useful to fill the gap uh, in instances where we're, where we're waiting for an engagement to pick up or something like that. Just imagine logging into a device and then being like, you know, hey, here's authentication to you know this router, this switch, or you know whatever else have you. You know, I have customers, you know, that are like, hey, what's this network? Like, how do you know about that? Well, it forgot to tell me about what is this. Like, all right, you shouldn't even be seeing that. Well, I am. Because it's interesting when you cascade and stack these, that information gets spilled all the way up and down the stack sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just uh, very interesting. But, but I, I, I think that we should be exploiting and, uh, uh, or trying to work to uh, do some things to remediate. But Cisco doesn't have guidance to re remediate all of this stuff, to be honest with you. Uh, so, I, I think that you know it's just useful for red and blue teams because it just provides powerful insight with zero transmission. It uses very little storage. Uh, so the problem with when I used to gather PCAS and such, I'm like, oh, you might fill the disk. You don't know. You're gonna run that screen session. I don't worry about that anymore uh, because I can gather quite a bit of information uh, 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 in a short amount of time without filling the disk. But it's also useful for uh, red teams and pen test teams uh, because again, it's a zero transmission. Information gathering tool, right? Uh, so uh, that's just going to provide powerful insight without getting caught. We dropped this on a red team a little while ago on a financial institution, and nobody saw it because it doesn't transmit anything. You can't see for developer connection. Uh, but it's also useful, you know, again, for those IOCs on the blue side, right? We want to develop an environment. People are like, oh, it's going to touch a great thing. No, because developers can transmit anything. Yeah. And you can find uh, things that are interacting with the environment yeah. that you're concerned about. And you can sit there and just run however long you want without using a ton of resources and provide uh, you know, maybe some sort of indication that something's interacting with this environment that it shouldn't, right? Yeah. Anyway. So, about the future. You know, uh, per some people's requests, uh, they shift to a semi passage or constant space. Uh, they told them to do so, but Pavelco is primarily a 100% passive tool. That's my goal. So I've had some people like, dude, can you make this thing do my pen test? I'm like, dude, why? You know, uh, uh, I'm trying to provide a different perspective, a different way of doing things. You know, port scanning a, a system behind a firewall that you can't reach. Um, but identifying services and ports, as well as identifying the jump host to reach that environment. That's useful intelligence. I'm not here to replace other tools that do that uh, uh, aggressive scanning and those things. They do great, they do a great job. Uh, but so we can talk about whether some sort of C2 instance, you know, where uh, uh, we're not uh, we're a port out to the mouth shit, uh, a little bit risky, but you know, can do that. So as the developer understands what's allowed to aggress the environment, that's the way to flow through when you're uh, getting, uh, uh, getting that out of the network. It's a flow like the network. So if I see things allowed on the internet, then maybe developer, if told to do so, might report out uh, over the internet uh, about what it's doing. Eventually, operating in kind of a mesh configuration. I kind of call them like four observers, where they might report back to the mothership and have a massive hive. But the beauty of the is it's got the single instance database, and I can use that from host to host to host. If I find a PCAP in a pen test, um, you know, I can certainly replay that, insert that additional data uh, into the database and then kind of figure out how to you know, do the things that I want to do. Uh, I think that eventually this will assist both red and blue teams uh, through attacks, audit, and defense. Uh, but again, it's not going to replace those traditional things, not always. I mean, if you do log in and you find you know, uh, credentials right off the bat, then maybe, you know. But. So, anyway, in closing, look, switches are snitches. If there's anything I want you guys to leave with, it says switches are snitches, and intelligence is everything. And these switches, it's not the manufacturer's fault, because uh, they're doing the best they, that they can. But the fact is, there's data that's leaking from here, and I shouldn't be seeing uh, these packets, and so we should be leveraging that. So, if you just leave from here with anything, remove that switches are snitches. For both, was designed to automate. 100% uh, passive reconnaissance. Uh, I think it's great for both offense and defense, and I think that uh, you should use this, at, if at all possible, prior to engagement, but during your engagements, to really work to understand the environments that you're either attacking or defending. So, that's about it. So, uh, I don't know how much time I have, but uh, 
Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay. Yes? Have you done any testing around after any other tool Yeah, so this, this, these, I, 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 I target enterprise environments. So the answer is yes. Uh, the answer is there is leakage. Um, uh, there's evidence of leakage. Even Cisco will tell you that VMs will leak to each other in an overwhelmed uh, leak. So if you're on the blue side and your blue side's telling you that or bandwidth is not good enough for our environment, you better address that given the bandwidth they need. We're all funded. But uh, but yes. Uh, and, and I originally thought that you know some people said, well maybe it's CDP or STP that's doing this. No, all I'm doing is gathering three-way handshakes and some real basic stuff. So it's nothing magic there. It's just the fact that uh, uh, an Ethernet frame spills over a port that we're not expecting, and I might snarf. What kind of intel can I pull from that? What kind of regex can I get from that? You know, I'm just a hacker, not a programmer, but I'm trying to get as much information as I can out of that. But I'm doing it without lifting a finger. So, yes. Oh, uh, what's your ETA for completion on the program? Okay, so question was, what's my ETA for completion of the program? Uh, so uh, the answer to that is, you remember the drunk baby? He's, so. Every time I try to write something that's very interesting and high impact, it's just like a module so that we can give you additional information. From the environment to the environment, it's changing. It took me a little while to, uh, uh, to really understand this. Uh, and it's just because the environment's overwhelmed during a backup window, or the environment's overwhelmed with a bunch of, you know, screw it, remote desktop sessions and things like that, right? So, so uh, uh, I really don't have a window. Again, I rage code this because people said it's impossible, so switches don't leak information. Uh, and that's where it originally started. I started using it for uh, internal engagements, and a lot of my other guys have been using it. It's been great. So I don't really have like an in window. I have a bunch of ideas that I'd like to do, you know. Um, but really, I'm here to solicit input from other people. You know, it's open source, it's available on GitHub, and uh, you know, I think that we should just be extending this as much as possible. Uh, because again, uh, nothing is secure if your layer two piece is compromised, or you know, yeah, yeah, with the wireless component in this. Any other questions? Yep. Yes. Are you looking for a community contribution? And if so, do you have like guidelines for your contribution on GitHub, that kind of thing? Question was, if, if I'm looking for community contribution, and so do I have any guidelines? Uh, the answer is, I would love for anybody to uh, con uh, contribute to this. I've had people from other organizations that have been providing contributions to this. I'm, I'm just a hacker, I'm not a programmer, bro. A lot of hackers think they're programmers, but they're not, right? And same thing, right? Uh, and uh, I'm probably the dumbest, smartest person I'll ever meet. So I guarantee you there's a lot of smart, a lot more smart people out there like, hey, it would be great if we did X. That doesn't mean that we'll always capture that in the environment, but absolutely, this thing's bigger than me, right? That's why I'm here, right? So absolutely, I love that. Do I have guidelines? Uh, the answer is no, because I'm just a hacker, not a programmer. So I need to get on that because GitHub's constantly reminding me, hey, guidelines would be great. So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, well, I'm William. Nice to see you all.